there's people that spend a lifetime looking around, trying to find it, trying to find that life that they were dreaming about, that life that they longed for, kind of longing for the dream life. Some of those people along the way just kind of go, not going to find it. Not in this world, not in this life, not with the cards I was dealt. But right in the middle of a little book in the New Testament, written 2,000 years ago, is the secret to the dream life. This letter inspired by the Holy Spirit of the living God, given to the Apostle Paul, almost 2,000 years ago, written to a little town called Ephesus. In this little letter, the Apostle Paul explains, led by the Holy Spirit, that, that the dream life is not something that just sort of, plop, drops into your lap. There it is. I found it. It's the dream life. That the dream life is not working hard enough for a short time so you can then do nothing for the rest of your life and sit around and have people bring you stuff and serve you and have a nice, cold, refreshing beverage on a beach somewhere. That that there's more to it than that. That the dream life is actually a process, a journey of not only coming to know Jesus, but then as you know Jesus putting aside some things that were part of your life before, kind of out with the old and in with the new. This is the way the Apostle Paul says it in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds. To be made new in the attitude of your minds, to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. The Apostle Paul says the journey to the dream life isn't just sort of stumbling into something. It's making a decision to take those things that were part of the old life that aren't what God has for you and leave them behind. Put them off. Strip them off. Be done with them. And make conscious, intentional, regular decisions to live a new way, to think a new way, to speak a new way, to love a new way, to become a different person by the power of the living God. And if you want to experience that dream life, then then it's time to to take God's call seriously and get out with the old and in with the new. And today, our final week in this series, the final portion of this passage, we're going to look at how we can move out with wasted time and in with a strategic life. That part of what's very clear in in this teaching that God gives to this church and gives through them to us as a church today is that part of the way you find the dream life is identifying those things that are just time wasters, kind of, kind of energy killers, things that aren't what God has for you, and just and to let them go, be done with those, and start your journey into intentionally planning a life that honors God. So Lord, this is our prayer today. Every one of us desires to live the dream life. Every one of us wants to experience what this life is really meant to be. God, we have one life given by you. We pray that we will not waste it, but that we'll use each day and each moment for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, if we're going to walk into this life of kind of getting rid of the time-wasting things and walking into an intentional, strategic plan that honors God with our lives, we have to beware of the black holes that suck us in and lead to wasted time, energy, and a wasted life. There are black holes, these things that just suck us in and suck in our time and our energy. We may not even see them, but all of a sudden, the, the, the sheer uh, force of them just kind of pulls us in, and before we know it, we're wasting hours and days and weeks and months of our life on some things that really don't matter. And, and so, so think about this for a minute. Have you ever sat down... So I just need a little break. I just gotta, I've been working, I've been studying, working through my language school, or I'm at college, or I'm working at my job, and I got, I got a little break, and I'm just going to take like three or four minutes. 
I'm going to pop onto YouTube and I'm just going to just find something interesting. You know, just a couple minutes just for a little break. And two and a half hours later, <laughs> you realize that, that you've seen all of Mike Tyson's best knockouts. <laughs> and you've seen kittens playing with yarn. And you've learned five new skills for refurbishing your kitchen. And you're updated on all kinds of news from various perspectives. All of a sudden, you realize it's two and a half hours have gone by, and you've been, and, and these weren't any things you planned. You just kind of, it just thing came, and all, and all of a sudden, that time of your life, whoosh, down the toilet. It's gone. You can't get it back. Maybe for you, you've experienced this. Something creates anxiety and worry in your heart and in your life. And you can't do anything about it. But it consumes your mind. It fills your thoughts. You spend dozens of hours worrying and fretting and wondering and thinking and being consumed by it, or hundreds of hours over time. And there's nothing you can do about that specific thing. But just whoosh, there goes those hours and worry and anxiety. And you're not getting to use those hours for what leads you to the life that God has planned for you. Maybe you like projects, and you started a project. It's just a little project, and you started it like you know, seven years ago. And, uh, and then when you get spare time, you, you work on it, and you put some money into it, and you buy this thing, and, you, and, and like years has gone by, year after year after year, and it, it doesn't look any different than when you started, but you just put all this time, you go, how in the world? Whoosh. There goes that time. Maybe at the end of a long, hard day. I mean, you've been in school all day studying. Or you've been working hard. And you're a teacher. You're in the area of, you're in law. You're in, you're in finance. Whatever. You're in, and you've worked hard all day long. So you get home in the evening. You go, yeah, I'm just going to sit down. I've earned it. I've, I've just, I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to take 30 minutes and just watch a show. I'm just going to watch a show. 30 minutes. So you, there you sit down and you enjoy that. And six hours later, it's one in the morning. You're dozing in and out. You're drooling on yourself. You're, you're, and, and, you're, and you're like, ah, I watched, half, I watched like half a year ep of episodes of the show. I hardly remember half of them. And, and, I, and I don't feel refreshed. I don't feel better. And that happens six nights a week. And you go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, is this how I want to spend the one and only life that God has given me? And I can give you a hundred other examples. There's all kinds of things that can just sort of suck us in and consume our time. And in the book of Ephesians, what God is telling us is that, is that he has plans for our life. He has things for us, but we have to make decisions to not let those things that, that, that misuse our time, that suck up time, that, that, you know, to, to, to let those things go and actually intentionally figure out what it is that God wants us to do with our lives and dig into it. And so we're going to look at kind of like the way it was when we're not careful how we can be with time and, and we're going to look at kind of what it could be and then what God's dream life might look like. So the way it was, what we learned in Ephesians chapter 5, and if you have your Bibles, you can open to Ephesians 5. If you have your Bible app, you can go there. It'll also be on the screens online and in the worship center and outdoors. But Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 8, the way it was, we were people wandering in darkness. We were people wandering in darkness is what the scriptures say. Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once darkness... But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Those are great words. The fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness. Fruitless. They, they bear no fruit. They bring nothing to you. But rather expose them. Here's the question to ask yourself today. And just take a quiet moment, honestly in your own heart. If you're a follower of God, if you're a Christian, ask God about this and be honest before God. If you're not yet a Christian, we have a lot of people that are exploring the Christian faith, just kind of ask yourself, you know, how do I use my time? Do I feel good about the use of my time? Do I invest it in things that really make a difference? How do I use my time? It's a good question to ask ourselves. We, we might want to avoid it because we don't really want to hear the answer, but it's a good question to ask. The way it was, 
The Apostle Paul addresses this issue. Their actions were fruitless. There's things that we can do that are fruitless. It's like, it's like having a, an orange tree, and you've had it in your yard, and you've been watering it and fertilizing it for you know, 12 years, but there's no oranges. It's never grown an orange. It's an orange tree with no oranges. At some point, you kind of go, this is not how it's supposed to be. He says, well, watch out in your lives, that your lives don't become like that, that you don't bear the fruit that God has for you. You know, the way it was, our, our actions were fruitless. Ephesians 5, 11, have nothing to do, nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, things that are kind of dark and that don't bear anything, but rather expose them, call them what they are, bring them into the light. It's shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. So this is this warning, be careful of fruitless things, things that can fill up your time and fill up your days, but when you're done, the result is Nothing. It's fruitless. It doesn't bear any fruit. It's just, it's just time fillers, time killers. And there's lots of those. And we actually, as a culture, we're creating more and more of those. More and more of those things that can fill our time but really bring nothing about. And then beware of things that are darkness. Things that might be culturally acceptable, but if Jesus were with you, you wouldn't be doing them. You know? Well, yeah, but he's not with me. Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, guess what? When you become a Christian, God by his spirit moves in and the spirit of Jesus lives in you. He's always with you. Yeah, but if he were really with me, I probably wouldn't do it. If there's things that you wouldn't do if Jesus were really there, you probably shouldn't be doing. Things that are, are, are dark, that are, aren't, aren't things that honor him. So watch out for things that are fruitless. Watch out for things that are darkness. The way it was, we engaged in unwise and time-wasting behaviors as a lifestyle. Do you know that time-wasting can become a lifestyle? People can master the skill of burning time that doesn't accomplish anything. Again, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 15. And we're going to kind of walk through this and look at some of the same things, but try to get some insight from God for our lives. Be careful, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. That passage should be locked in our hearts, tattooed on our souls making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. I studied that, that days are evil. What does that mean? It means the world's filled with all kinds of evil things and if our time is open and we're not careful, some of those things are gonna creep into our lives. There's plenty of evil stuff out there, things that aren't good for us and if we're not careful, that can become part of what we do because the days are evil. Verse 17, therefore do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. God, what is your will for me? What is your plan for me? Our strategy for our lives isn't our thing, it's God's thing. What's the Lord's will? And do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Debauchery. It just sounds like a bad word, doesn't it? Debauchery. You know what debauchery is? All kinds of bad stuff. It's just, it's all just bad. Debauchery. And it says, be careful that you're not putting cis, uh, substances in your body, whether it's a drink or whether it's a pill or whether it's a shot, you know, that you're not putting things in your body that, that numb you. That, that keep you from recognizing that you're wasting time, that keep you from recognizing what God's plan is for you. Be careful of anything you put in your body that keeps you from being the person God wants you to be. So there's a lot of warnings here. All right, so, so let's just take a moment and quiet your heart. And I want to ask you just to, to honestly, if you, again, if you're a follower of God, if you're a follower of Jesus, ask this before the Lord. If you're not yet a Christian, Maybe say, God, if you're there, I'm going to do this before you. I'm going to try that. If you don't believe that God's there, then just say, just, just reflect for a minute on your life. Because God, there is a God and he cares about how you use your days. But ask yourself this question, am I making the most? Am I making the most of the time I have in this moment of my life? Am I making the most of my hours and my days and my weeks and my months? Some of you are young. You have a lot of years ahead. So, some are saying, you know, I don't know how many years I have left, but with the, with the days and hours and weeks and months and years that I have, am I making the most of my time? Ask this question. Is the way I'm using my time in line with God's will? Would God look at my days and say, great use of your time, valuable, good use of your time? And one more honest question. And this is the point where some people may want to shut down, but I encourage you not to. Let God speak to your heart. But am I numbing my mind and my body and my soul with substances? Am I using different substances to numb my mind, to numb my body, to numb my soul? And if you are, say, God, I don't want to do that anymore. 
And just you know, here at Shoreline, we got, we got ministries and places you can connect that'll help you address those things and think about those things and try to change some lifestyle patterns. But if you're doing that, there's this warning. Be careful. You're not numbing yourself. So, so the way it was, if we're not careful, we can, just, we can live our days. And, and here's the reality. We can fill our days with stuff. We can find stuff to fill our days. There's plenty of things out there. There's more entertainment and more media available than there's ever been in the history of the world. I mean, we can fill our days with stuff. But, but are, are, we, you know, are, are we living in the way it was where we're actually living life, but there's nothing fruitful. There's things that are dark. We're just not living the kind of life God wants for us. And we can start to think about the way it could be because the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, starts to paint a picture of what our lives could be like, what a dream life could be like. To actually live a life that's fruitful. It's in the light of Jesus that makes a difference in this world. So listen to the positive side. The way it could be, we can walk with Jesus in his light. We can walk every day in the light of Jesus. Look at Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now... You are light in the world. That's talking about followers of Jesus because the light of Jesus shines in you and through you. So live as children of light for the fruits of the light consist in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. And I love this. This is why it is said, wake up. Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. It's time to wake up. God is saying, if you're you're sleepwalking, if you're cruising through life, if you're burning through day after day after day and nothing's really coming out of your life, there's more. That's not the dream life. Getting to the point where you don't have to do anything at all and sit around and do nothing until you die is not the dream life. It's not what God has for you. There's more. And so say, say, God, wake me up. Shine your light in me. Shine your light through me. And the apostle Paul says, you are the light. Jesus also says that. He talks about how he himself is the light of the world, but when we walk with him, we become light in this world. We're children of the light because of who our father is, our heavenly father. We can expose the darkness and the things of the past and leave those things behind. We can wake up to a new beginning and a new life. The way it could be, we can live a fruitful life that pleases God. We could live day after day after day doing things that actually make a difference to the people around us, in our lives, and to the heart of God. Verse 9 of Ephesians 5. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So here's some questions to ask. If you say, am I walking into the dream life that God has for me? How do I know if I'm walking into God's plan, God's desire, God's dream life for me? Ask these questions. Is it good? Are the things I'm doing good? Go, so how would I know? Oh, you have a sense. Ask God. Read his word. Are these things good? Are they right? Are the things I'm doing righteous in God's sight? See, some of the things that we can get sucked into spending all of our time on are neutral, but some of those things are not good things. They're things in the darkness. They can consume lots of hours and lots of time and a lot of our lives. And so, is it right? Is it righteous? Is it true? Is what I'm doing reveal the truth of God's love, the truth of his presence, the glory of Jesus? Is it pleasing to God? I love this in verse 10. And find out what pleases the Lord. Is what I'm doing pleasing to God? You see, as we walk through this life, there's things that we can do that are neutral things, that aren't good or bad, that can be pleasing to the Lord, and the same neutral thing could be a time waster. The exact same thing. So in in my own life, um, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I like, I I love to work. I really do. I love being, it, it is an, Every day I get to be a pastor and serve the church, it's an absolute honor to me. I love to be a pastor. My wife and I started a ministry called Organic Outreach International. We have a staff and team that lead it and run it, but we are partners in that, and we're involved in Organic Outreach International, which is kind of like a second track of where we invest in things. And then we also do write, we write stuff. And so between those three things, we keep pretty busy. So I don't have like a bunch of ho- hobbies, but I, but I do love to golf. I love to golf. 
I love getting together with people and walking out on you know, green fairways and a blue sky or even on a windy day. I, just, I love getting out and playing golf. I love being with friends. I love taunting and teasing people when it's appropriate. Um, you know, I, I, the golf's a game where you kind of play along. You know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's really fun. And so usually, most of the time when it comes to golf, and my, in, my, in my life and with Sherry as my wife, she'll say, I'll, I'll come home after work and, be, you know, and she'll go, hey, you ought to go out for like an hour and play a little bit of golf. She'll like, and I'm like, you're trying to get rid of me? No. But uh, and she's just like, no, you, she just loves me. She knows it. She says, you ought to just go and play a little bit. And, and she looks at She knows I have fun. It's relaxing. It's enjoying. It, it, it kind of revives my soul. I actually have fun playing. I really don't get mad along, along the way. I just enjoy playing. Um, but, but there's been times in my life where my wife has said to me, hey, Kevin, I think you're playing a little bit too much golf. And I always totally agree with her right away. <laughs> I pray, and I get, try to get a good attitude. And I, no, I'm not. I'm fine, and I can get defensive. But, then, but, then, but most of the time when I really look at it, I go, you know what? It's actually that this good, fun thing has now become something that's beca- taking up too much time. So, so not everything that takes up our time is a bad thing. It can actually be a good thing, but it's when it starts to consume us and take up too much time. And, and so we, we've got we've to look and say, is this good is it right in God's sight? Is it true? Does it please God? And again, there's some things that may be neutral that could become bad if we do it too much or could be healthy if we have it in balance. The way it could be, when we wake up, we can live a spirit-filled life in line with God's will. This doesn't mean wake up in the morning. This means when we wake up spiritually and go, wait a minute. When we wake up and go, wait a minute. I have one life that God has given me and every hour is precious. And God could use me and my gifts and my abilities to be a blessing to do things that would make a difference in this world. See, the enemy lies and tells us there's nothing you can do that really matters. That's not true. That is not true. Your days matter. God made you. God designed you. And if you come to the cross and receive Jesus, you're now filled with his Holy Spirit. You have things to offer in this world. So when we wake up, we can live a spirit-filled life in line with God's will. Listen again to Ephesians 5. I'll start at verse 14. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine in you. It's time to wake up and realize that God wants to do something in you and through you, shine through you. And then we go on in verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, don't live an unwise life, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, making the most of every opportunity that comes your way, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. How does God want me to live? What does he want me to do? Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. This might be a day that the Holy Spirit says to some of people online, on campus, I gotta wake up. I've been just sleepwalking through days and weeks and months. And time, you know, time goes like that. It really does. I mean, sometimes I just, I just stand in a maze. I'm, I'm like, I'm married to a grandma. <laughs> How did that happen? I, sometimes I feel like I'm still 17. I, can, I mean, I can remember going down, hanging out. Hanging, I mean, I can remember just being, and, and now, and not only am I married to a grandma, I'm a grandpa. Like that. The years go by, right? But, but to just to, to wake up and say, but wait a minute, God has given me this life. And with the days and weeks and months and years I have left. I mean, don't, 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 don't sit here today and get all caught up. In, oh my gosh, I've wasted so much. Just say, okay, Lord, wake me up today. Let me decide today I am going to live for you. I'm going to go forward strategically, intentionally, trying to give my life to live for the glory of God. And when you do, you find the dream life. That's where you find it. Not getting to a place where you're going to sit around and do nothing Have people give you cold drinks on a beach and sit in a lounge chair until you finally keel over and die. Woo, that was it. That was the dream life. No. It's a life filled with living for God. This morning, this morning when I came to church here, every every Sunday morning, we'll meet as a team out here in 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 the lobby and we pray together. We pray for all of you. We pray for children's ministry. All that happens in the church. We pray for every guest that's gonna walk on our campus and join us online. We pray for you. And then after I pray with that team, I come in here get my mic on, get a mic check, and then we pray with the worship team, with the program people and the singers. And this morning, I was just struck by, here's this group of of musicians and this group of program people, almost every one of which is a volunteer. Almost every one of them that was up here. As a matter of fact, today, we had a guest worship leader 
Every, everyone you saw up here, they're all volunteers. I said, what? I said, then what time did you wake up this morning to get here to serve the people of God? It humbled me. A couple people answered. It was between 4.30 and 5.15. Because they were here last, there's a service before this one, by the way. Um, <laughs> they, they woke up between 4.30 to 5.15 to, to get cleaned up and to get here and to come to lead you into the presence of God. And the program people did the same. The camera team, all this, all this team, they're, they're here early practicing, getting ready. And you know what? If you ask them, if you ask these singers and the guitar players and drummers when they were up here leading you in worship, as they are up here praising God and seeing you all praise Jesus and come to the presence of God, if you ask them, would you rather be in bed right now sleeping? They'd say, no, that's the whole point. That's why we're up at 4.30 to be here because this is the dream life. God's using my abilities to tell people to worship Jesus. What's better than that? And some people look and go, why would you get up at fourth? And, and they will, most of them will be here. Some of their instruments are still here. They'll, they'll be here till after the service is over. And, and they do it because they love Jesus. They love you and they want people to worship. That, that's the journey to the dream life, making that decision. They had to set an alarm, make a plan, be intentional, be strategic to make the space. And most of them are practicing during the week to make sure they know the songs so they're ready to lead us in worship. And they find joy and delight in it because that's the life that God has given them. The way it could be. When, when we live in that dream life, what happens? We can sing, we can worship, we can live in joy. The Apostle Paul continues in this passage in Ephesians 5, verse 19. He says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you begin to walk in that dream life, a song comes to your heart, even if you're not a big singer. You know, the, the praise comes thanks to God. Oh God, that you could use me to be a blessing to others. There's people right now that are upstairs in our children's ministry area and they're caring for your kids. There's people over here in our building that are with the littlest ones, holding little ones, praying for them, providing snacks for them. So you can be here worshiping. And while they're doing it, they're just going, Lord, what a gift. I think of Marion Burgess. I don't know if she's in. She usually comes to one of the services and the other service. She always says, I'll be in there holding babies. Pastor Roy, who was one of the chaplains that you saw up on the video there, Marion's his mommy. Roy's not a young man. That's his mom. She's part of this church. And every week I say, how you doing, Marion? When I see her, she says, oh, I get to hold babies. I get to hold the babies. That's the dream life. Serving and living in the name of Jesus. Not doing nothing, but doing things that bear fruit, that bring light, that bring glory to the living God. Living the dream life. We can shine the light and truth of Jesus in our dark world. If we're going to live this dream life, we can actually shine his light. Ephesians 5.8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live. Live as children in the light children of the light. Don't live in darkness anymore. Leave that behind and live in the light of Jesus. So, so if you say, well, how do I invest? You know, how do I invest my time, my energy, my abilities, my life in things that shine the light of Jesus? There's all kinds of ways to do it. Here's just a couple. And if you're a note taker, you can write these down or just listen and take a note in your mind. Maybe one thing jumps out and says, that's for me. But how do I, how do I shine the light of Jesus? By serving others. Serve people in the, through the church, in our community, in your home. Service isn't just in the church. This is a great place to serve, but serve in your home, serve in your neighborhood, serve in the community. I, I love, we're partners as chaplains now with the local police, not because they came to us and asked us. One of the, the police officers told me today, you know, we're doing this because two of your pastors came to us and said, can we serve you? And that's on top of all the other work that Pastor Dennis and Pastor Roy do. Now, they're not gonna be chaplains to all the other police, but they're trying to set up Chaplaincy, so that all of the police in the area, if, something, if they have a need or a concern, there's someone who can pray and give wisdom from this book and from the heart of Jesus. That's the dream life. Say, I'm already busy. I got a lot going on. But is there another fresh way we can serve this community that God's put us in? So we try to serve everywhere we can. Why? Because we're Christians. We walk in the light. We shine the light. We live in the light of Jesus. You want to find the dream life Open this book every day and let God speak to you. I'll, I'll give you a, a little idea. Make one flip. Make one flip in your life. One switch and watch what happens. Do it for a week. One flip. Here it is. How much time do I spend engaged in media 
any kind of media, and how much time do I spend reading the Bible? And then just for one week, flip those. You go, well, wait a minute. <laughs> then that means I'd, like, I'd be reading the Bible like for 45 hours. Uh, I don't have time to read the Bible. Well, that's because you spent 45 hours doing the, you know. But just try it. So I couldn't do that. But I tell you what, the life, the truth, the light that God reveals through his word. We spend so many hours just filling our hearts and our minds with stuff that may be fun and interesting or neutral or garbage. But hours and hours and hours and hours. And we might give this 15, 20 minutes a day or 15, 20 minutes a week or Sunday at church. This is the Holy Spirit breathed word of the living God. Dig into it. Get to know it better. Jump into a Bible study, a class here at Shoreline Church. Um, how, how do you shine the light of Jesus? How about intentionally planning to speak words or write words of blessing to other people? You want to want to live in the light of Jesus? You want to want to walk in the ways of Jesus? Make a choice every day. How, what's who's someone I can speak to or write to, and just tell them thank you for this, bless you for that. I see this wonderful thing in you. I, I, years ago in the church I served, I've only been a senior pastor in two churches and I'm, and I'm only going to ever be a senior pastor in two churches. This is my, the last church I'm going to ever serve. And so, um, but, but the first church I served, there was a guy who worked uh, in, our, in our sound booth, volunteered in the sound booth. And over the course of a number of years, I wrote him five different, I didn't know I'd written him five notes, but I wrote him five notes just thanking him for serving so faithfully. I knew he had, I'd written him five notes because when I was leaving, when I was retiring from there and moving out here, um, he actually said to me, he said, and he, this is a guy like, you know, six foot five, big, he's a plumber, big guy, and his name was John, and he, he said, Pastor, he said, I gotta tell you something. He said, you've written me five notes since you've been here. And I thought, first I thought, oh my gosh, is that all? I thought, I, you know, I could have done more than that, but he said, he said, I kept every one of those. He said, when I get discouraged, I wonder if my life is worth much, I read those notes. That's what he said. Those notes probably took me you know, four or five minutes to write. And it meant the world to him. Do you know how much power you have in what you say? How you can bless the next generation, you can bless a friend, you can bless a stranger. Your words have power. When you write things down and give them to people, they hold on to them because they don't get a lot of encouragement. Most people don't. That's living the dream life. Blessing people, building them up. Spending time with people hanging out with people, spending real time with them. And you know what? Spending time with people untethered to your technical world. Most of the devices we have right now that, that, that are you know, in our pockets or on our wrists or connected to us, um, those didn't exist a short time ago in history. But when you're with a person one-on-one, -on -one, you're having a conversation with somebody one-on-one -on -one and they're talking and as they're talking, they go, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then about five minutes later, you're talking, what's going on? They're not checking the time. What are they checking? Texts, emails, communication. And you're not alone. Stuff's floating in. Turn it off. If you're going to spend time with somebody, you really spend time with them. In my, in my office here at the church upstairs here in the corner of the building, I have an office in my kind of sitting room, part of my office where I'll, where I'll study, where I'll meet with people. Outside of there, there's a phone charger and a watch charger unit. And when people are going to come in and meet with me, I say, oh, please leave your technology out there. I'm not afraid of it. I just want to actually have a conversation with a human being. And if I'm going to spend time with somebody, I'm going to give them my full attention, but I'd like their full attention. Thank you very much. If someone's like, you know, if somebody says, well, my wife's going to deliver our baby in the next three days, I'll say, keep your phone on you. But, but generally speaking, whatever's going to happen in 30 minutes, it'll be on your phone if it comes through and you can respond then. But spend, you want to spend time doing things that bring glory to God, that help you live the dream life, actually connect with human beings. Spend time with them, laugh with them, play, have fun, pray, talk, share heartaches, be friends to each other. Tell stories of faith. Talk about Jesus. Talk about what he means to you. Talk, talk about how he's working in your life. Those things will lead you into the dream life. Living the dream life. We can be radical God pleasers. Ephesians 5.10, this one little verse. And find out what pleases the Lord. How can I know what pleases God? Hello. Um, 66 books, all wrapped in one book. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Dig into God's word. Watch wise people who live in ways that please God and learn from them. Talk with godly people and learn how to walk in the ways of Jesus. Here's a question. What's one God-pleasing thing I can start doing? 
ask you, what's one thing that would please God and be a blessing to others that I can start doing? You know, care for a neighbor. Work you know, and get involved in the church. Work with, with the kids in the church. Work with our young people, with our high, middle school, high school, young adults. Invest in their lives. Man, this, you know, we can st- stand back and go, oh, this world's so messed up, man. What kind of world are we delivering to the next generation? Okay, it's great to, to look back and see that and to lament it. How about you step in and say, can I help the next generation? Can I get involved? Can I pray? Can I serve? Can I love? Can I care? It makes a huge difference. One of the things I love that Brandon does in our student ministries is he wants every single young person from middle school, high school, young adult to have people that know their name and know their story and care about them here in this church. And so the, the, the student volunteers and the adult volunteers are there to help people be known and loved and to see what it looks like to walk with Jesus. Living the dream life. We can live a wise and strategic life. Listen to this passage one more time. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live. Look at your life, assess it. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of the living God. Let me ask you a question. What's one strategic step you can take? One next step. I can step into this next step and start to live a more intentional life, walking away from wasting my time and my days and my life and investing them. Here's some quick ideas before I close in prayer. And again, if you're a note taker, you can write these down. Keep a calendar and track how you spend your time. I don't want to know. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. Keep a track how much time you spend on social media, how much time you spend on watching shows, how much time you spend in whatever the things that are a hobby. And, and say, maybe this, is a, maybe this one's a neutral one, but man, I'm spending way too much time there. Track things. Keep a calendar. Get a, an accountability partner. Find someone that tr- you trust and that trusts you. And say, listen, I'm trying to do a lot less of this and a lot more of that. Will you pray for me? Will you ask me how I'm doing? And will you actually give me a little encouragement, cheer me on, and maybe pressure me a little bit? Because that's what good accountability does. It lifts, raises the bar. Find someone in your life that will help you follow through on what you know you should be doing. Raise the bar regularly in your own life. What's my next step? What's my next step? To live the life that God has for me. To live that dream life. Use good apps. There's apps that will gauge your, that'll tell you how much you're sleeping how much time you're spending on media, how much you're exercising. Use some of those tools and, and get an assessment of how you're doing to say, I want to live every day for God and these things will help me figure out how to do that. Maybe it's time to fast from some of those time killers. Maybe it's time to put a stake in the heart of some of those things that get in the way of you living the life that God has for you. Those things where you go, you know, I... With this particular thing, it takes a lot of time, and I don't think I can just trim it back. I think I may just need to jettison this thing. I may just need to... Gone. If that's the case. Or, or fast. Fast from something that's consuming your time. Fast for a week. Fast for a couple weeks. And what you might find out is, oh my goodness, the time this opens up, and the joy I find, and the closeness with Jesus, what in the, why, why did that seem so attractive? Why was I spending so much time on that? But fast for a while and see how much it really matters to you. Lay it aside. And immerse yourself. Put yourself in the light of Jesus, in the ways of Jesus. The dream life is not doing nothing till you die. The dream life will not just drop into your lap one day, I found it. It's a decision to follow God's word, to leave certain things behind so you can live the life that God has for you. And as you do, <clears throat> as the spirit of God fills you, as God leads you, you, you all of a sudden you're going to say, you know what? It doesn't look exactly like I thought thought it would, but this is the life that God had for me. In the midst of the ups and the downs, the challenges and the joys, this is the life that God has for me. God, this is our prayer. That as we press forward, for every person listening online and on campus who has come to the cross and received Jesus and has taken your hand, Jesus, and you're the leader of their life, I pray that each one of us who knows you will grow in our faith and grow in our walk with you, that our life will be filled with the things that please you. And we would set aside those things that that just kill our time and consume our days, but bear no fruit for this world, for anyone around us, or for eternity. Lord, give us wisdom to follow you in fresh new ways. 
and dream with you what our lives could be. And then, Lord, let us look to you. And one day and today, hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Let us live the lives you have planned for us, we pray in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Before I have you stand and send you off with a word of blessing online and on campus, it's super September at Shoreline. I want to let you know some things that are going on that are really important. I hope at least one of these things is for you. So you can listen as I go through them and you can say, that's for me or that's not for me. Here's one. There's lots of stuff going on. Um, we, we had uh, fire trucks and police cars here between services. Hopefully the kids uh, got to see those. But there still is the place where they can get like a little first aid kit and, and learn some things about our first responders. So if you pick your kids up and they missed the fire trucks and the police you know, car and all that, it means you are late to church. But there's still, but there's still uh, there's, there's, uh, canopies and tables out there. Make sure you go by there on your way out. Uh, second, this Thursday... Gary Thomas will be here. Gary Thomas is a gifted communicator and writer, and he's going to be focusing on one of the, the most current topics in the world right now. How do you deal with toxic people in your life who are just difficult and painful? And how do you invest your life in healthy people and not get sucked in, waste all that time and sucked in by people that are toxic and dangerous? The event is $30 per person. That includes his $25 book that we're going to give you as part of that. But if you can't afford it, just register, and you can come for free. If you can afford it, pay the 30 bucks. And if you got extra, pay for you and one other person so that someone can't afford it can come. But we'll, we, everyone can come. So th- this, this Thursday night, it's going to be powerful. If you can register today, we'd love to know who's going to be coming to that. Um, if you, w- maybe you're listening today and saying, I want to step into some new place of serving. Maybe you say, I'd love to lead a Bible study or a small group. We're doing it, uh, we're doing it at 1230 today. So in about 20 minutes, uh, we're going to have a small group leader training for people that just want to learn. It doesn't mean you're going to be a small group leader. It means you want to learn about it. And you say, that sounds interesting then jump in and join, uh, join Ashley at 12.30 in the Pacific Room. If you can't find that, go by the Connection Center. They'll guide you there. Spiritual growth class right now is going to start in about five minutes. My wife Sherry is going to lead it. If you want to figure out how your journey of spiritual growth to become more like Jesus and, and do, a, do a little assessment tool to help you see how you're doing, uh, join Sherry right now, and she's going to be in the garden room upstairs right here. And after that self-assessment, if you want to meet with someone one-on-one and design a personal growth plan, we, will, we have people ready and trained to meet with anyone in our entire church one-on-one and help them design a personal growth plan. So you can do that? Yes, that's, and, and we love to do that. So if you're interested in that, that's happening in about five minutes up the stairs here. Uh, and then baptism class today at 1230 in the Peninsula Room over here. And Pastor Roy, we're going to be doing beach baptisms the last Sunday of September, September 25th, in the ocean, immersion baptisms, and also kind of picnic, barbecue, hangout, fun time, bring your own grill, fun time at the beach uh, to, kick, to finish off our month. And so 1230 today in the Peninsula Room, in about 20 minutes, join, uh, join Roy if you want to learn about baptism. If you want prayer right now for anything at all, if you're online, we want to pray with you personally. You can call the phone number you see right on your screen, and there's someone that will pick up that phone and pray with you. Or if you want to email your uh, prayer request, there's an address there. Send it to us, and we'll pray over the next couple weeks. We have a whole prayer team that will be honored to pray for you. And also, if you're online and you're new, warm personal welcome. Just text the word welcome to the phone number you see there, and we will reach out to you and give a personal welcome. If you're on campus and you want prayer, on both sides, we got teams, everyone lined up and ready to go. Four teams for prayer here. And so if you want prayer on campus, come on the worship center, join those folks for prayer. And if, you're, uh, if you are on campus and new, we want to give you a warm personal welcome. If you go to the Connection Center, whether you're outdoors or indoors here, go to the Connection Center and they will give you a little gift bag. And thank you for coming and answering your questions about Shoreline Church. It's Super September. I never do that many announcements, but that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're able, will you stand with me? I'd love to send you off with a word of blessing. Just open your heart to receive these words of blessing as we finish our time together. Whether you're at home, online, or here, open your heart to receive this blessing as we go from this time together. May you walk in the presence of the God who left the glory of heaven and came to this world, who lived on this earth and gave his life on a cross for you. Jesus was strategic and intentional. He entered time and space to serve us. So now you use every moment you have for the glory of God. Follow Jesus' ways. Use wisdom and prayer and be able to say, thank you, Lord, for this day. I've done my best to use it for your glory. Go in his peace and live for Jesus. We'll see some of you Thursday night at the Gary Thomas event or next Sunday. Have a great week.